and thanks for joining us again on Stellar Journeys. My name is Ash, and this is Kat. Last week we looked into the start of humanity going into space, from small satellites to footsteps on the moon. It would soon become something to unite nations across the world. Society learnt from the errors of our past and continued to push exploration to new heights. Today, we continue our adventure through the history of space travel, starting with the shuttle era. The International Space Station is an extraordinary achievement that saw for the first time collaboration of many nations around the world, including adversaries to build the biggest structure by humans in space. This would not have been possible without the heavy lifting of a transportation system often referred to as the space truck, aka the space shuttle. Yeah, we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T minus 17 seconds and count. 15, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 8, start, start, 2, 1, boost ignition and lift off of the space shuttle discovery. The Space Shuttle program was known as the fourth human space flight program carried out by NASA. It was established to create reusable transportation in pursuit of space exploration. Dating back to its inception in the 1970s, over 50 years ago, let us jump on a virtual timeline and explore the shuttle's history, achievements and overall contribution to humans reaching to the stars. It all started with an idea. January 5th, 1972, the Space Transportation Program, known as the STS, was created by NASA. From August 12th, 1977, Enterprise commenced a test program known as ALT, which is Approach and Landing Test. 16 test flights, manned and unmanned, were undertaken during the course of this program. In 1977, prototype tests were completed. Over a five-year period from 1977, construction of the first shuttle took place. Columbia had the honour of undertaking the first flight, known as STS-1. In 1986, unfortunately, Challenger breaks apart during launch, killing all crew. However, the missions continued, and in 1989, the Space Shuttle Atlantis launched the Galileo spacecraft to Jupiter. On July 8, 2011, the last Space Shuttle mission, STS-135, launched from the US. Throughout its years, the Space Shuttle contributed to the assembly of the International Space Station. Humanity now had a home away from home and is still in use today. The shuttle went through many designs but it established itself as a reusable transportation system. The Space Shuttle era lasted 30 years. The Space Shuttle era, without a doubt, contributed to a massive leap in space exploration. Humanity had created a reusable transportation system, a home in space, the International Space Station, and enabled humans to boldly undertake stellar journeys within our own universe and beyond. From the setup of the International Space Station, our technology and ability to explore had sped forward. Space was no longer just for governments, but also approaching a place for the everyday person. We sent Sophia to find out more. Pilot Sean Proctor always dreamt of flying to space. Proctor's father was a part of a very significant team that helped navigate Apollo 11 back down to Earth, so her passion for space flight runs in her blood. But there were limited opportunities available. Proctor tried out for NASA's astronaut selection process, but just missed out. 
So, in 2013, she participated in an analogue mission in Hawaii, where she was in a Mars-simulated habitat for three months. Fast forward to today, Proctor has made history Companies like Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin and SpaceX should be commended for enabling opportunities like these to happen, as they have been developing new types of spacecraft in recent years. To the next generation of dreamers, if we can do this, just imagine what you can do. Hey. Virgin Galactic is said to be the world's first space tourism company, taking up to six tourists and two pilots on a voyage to outer space. White Knight 2 is this mothership that helps the reusable space plane, Spaceship 2, reach an altitude of 50,000 feet. So White Knight 2 hauls Spaceship 2 up into space, leaving passengers to enjoy the scenery and experience momentary weightlessness. Blue Origin is a suborbital spaceflight company founded by Jeff Bezos and only just recently launched the 90-year-old William Shatner into space. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm telling you. Holy hell. Oh, my goodness me. In 2011, the company launched a test vehicle, New Shepard, 548 feet up into the air. New Shepard is reusable and efficient as it has the ability to vertically launch and land itself. Jeff Bezos flew into space with three non-astronauts on the 20th of July, following in Virgin Galactic's footsteps. SpaceX was founded in 2002 by Elon Musk with hopes of reducing the cost of space transportation so that we could focus on colonizing Mars in the most efficient way. In 2010, SpaceX made history, sending the first space vehicle, Dragon, out into orbit. In 2012, the company used a Falcon 9 rocket and Dragon spacecraft to deliver cargo on board the International Space Station. As of today, Dragon has gone to the International Space Station over 20 times, delivering supplies to the astronauts on board. And since this time, a new version of Dragon has been developed, making it now accessible for space crew to travel in. It's great to see how the development of new technology provides life-changing opportunities for humans, and not only astronauts, but everyday people. Proctor and her crew of non-astronauts were launched into space on the 15th of September this year while riding in SpaceX's Dragon capsule. They orbited Earth for three days. The mission was funded by commander and billionaire Jared Isaacman. This mission is historically significant. It reached a number of milestones. These include having an all non-astronaut crew fly out into space for longer than a few minutes or longer than an hour, having three Dragon capsules up in orbit at once. No matter your age, race or gender, we are all capable of achieving incredible things. It's incredible to think that people like you and I could be shortly going into space. Do you think you'd go? I think I would. Really? It's an opportunity to see the world in a different space and I've never been able to do that before. So yes, yes I would. Would you? It's so high up. I don't, I don't like heights. I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll send you first and a few others and you can test out the safety and then maybe I'll think about going. I see how things are. Mm, mm. <laughs> All right, join us next time as we look into some of the unique challenges we must overcome as we journey to the stars. Thanks for joining see us, See you next everyone. time. Bye. Bye.